time on your side is your first time meeting us and you would like to know about us but it's maybe the 30th time we're getting asked the same question over and over and there's some good days for us there's some bad days for us mm -hmm. you know basically i would say be careful how you approach a person just introduce yourself and let them open up to you you know sometimes they want to share their soul with you but just to be a listener not to be critical uh, be helpful, ask uh, if there's anything you can do for them. You're probably not their first experience, you know. Many times the guests will make you feel comfortable. Yeah, you avoid things like, where are you from? Or where are you living? Or, uh, you know, what happened? Uh, greet them, always greet them with your name first. And that gives, and if sometimes they, you know, and then you say, and what's your name, if, and, and how do you like to be addressed? That's the main key, just listen. You don't necessarily have to say anything. Just listen. That's all, that's all guests need, just to have a listening ear. It's hard sometimes, uh, some of the facilities don't provide private rooms. In our church, we use partitions, and privacy is very limited. And everybody, everybody needs time to be able to go on their own, whether it's to deal with things themselves, just have quiet time, it's very important. There are two different kinds of families, I think. Some of them that do leave almost immediately after dinner, and we, we cannot be offended by that. And then some of them, I, I had one family that they would have stayed up every night until we, in fact, until we told them, you need to go to bed because they love to play cards and interact. Um, so I think you have to take, take their temperature by where they're at. We absolutely give them as much space and as much privacy as they require. Um, you know, we always knock before you go into the room. Even though some guests will say to you, yeah, just come on in whenever you, you know, if you, if you had a conversation about somebody, say, yeah, just come on in. Always knock. You never know. Be sure that you give them their, their space. They have their, their room uh, assigned to them. You know, knock on the door, don't walk in. <laughs> and uh, if they're not ready to talk, just leave them alone, let them be by themselves. Sometimes they like that to just, you know, go off in their room and stay there for the evening. It, it doesn't mean that they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> it's nothing against you, but you know, we all have that, those times when we want to be alone. Everybody has unique parenting styles. Um, if you don't agree with something or something really bothers you, then you bring it to the coordinator or the coordinator brings it to the director of the program and you let them handle it and approach the guest. But co confronting the guest or the guest confronting the volunteers one-on-one -on -one is not a good idea. It's really good to have kids get involved um, like Ashley's age because they can actually sometimes help to draw the kids out you know, and they see other kids come and participate. And when you participate as a family, sometimes I key in on the young guys and Ian will go and talk to them because they don't necessarily want to talk to a, a female, you know, <laughs> or they don't think we can relate. So. You know, just, just be there, just sit and talk with them a little bit. Uh, you know, my kids are older, you know, at, at the time. So uh, it's, it's different when it comes to older kids and little kids. You know, little kids, they, some of them might understand what's going on, but the older kids have more of a grasp on the reality that, hey, we don't have a home. You know, and it's, um, it's a very difficult thing for, for them to deal with. You know, they've been through a lot. You wanna, you wanna be with them, help them, pay attention to them, but you're not their parent. And it's sometimes tough to understand what that parenting style is and, and, you know, let that be the guy. And also not pry into sort of what, into what their lives are about. If they want to talk about something, by all means, let them and listen. And be, be sort of sensitive to how you respond to what they say. I think trying to to just think of everybody who's in the space at the same time as being there together, rather than referring to uh, you know them and us, that they're here and 
and and separating that out and just if when you use someone's name instead of a label or you use a name instead of a pronoun then they're people and when you're talking to the guests to talk to them about our space as their home you know if they need something from the kitchen if they need something from their room giving that kind of direction it just it becomes more inclusive and it doesn't separate out that that they at this moment are are homeless there are people who don't feel like they want to talk. Um, maybe they're just in too tough of a state. Maybe they're not people who love sharing their innermost emotions and feelings. And I think you don't push. You don't make believe or assume that you know more. Yeah, when you go to volunteer, immediate things to come to mind are kindness, guest-centered, so what is it the guests want to do, and just unconditional love. I'm a single mother. So pushing and prying about how come their father's not there or why is he not there? Is he ever gonna be around? Has he passed away? That's too much, that's too prying and that's, that's hard because as a single mother I think about it every day to begin with. Thinking before you speak um, and given the situation, that, given the, 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 the audience to whom you're speaking, it's not your next door neighbor where you can be a little bit more, you know, relaxed, uh, it's important to, to think about the families, the guests in your home. I mean, how would, you, how would you behave with a guest in your home? Only thing I can say, it changes your life. It makes you more humble. It makes you, when you, when you view uh, somebody who's homeless, you view it differently once you've experienced it. I never used to view it the way I view it today. You know, I used to look at homeless people and uh, walking down the street and be like, well, why doesn't he just do something about it? It's, doesn't, it's not always like that. And I learned that through, because I went through this experience. It is the stepping stone from when you've hit rock bottom. The families that I've seen come through us sometimes give me a glimpse in how strong humanity can be because I see them being strong people who love their children, who want to do better, and I think if I were in their place, could I do as well as they do?